Operating on sea, air, and land, the Navy SEAL's the ultimate special warrior. This month, All Hands Television looks at what it takes to build a SEAL. In the surf, in the snow, on land, or falling from the sky, it's all SEAL. I'm Petty Officer Matt Oldham. With our forces deployed and engaged in various operations around the world, the pressure and demands on the special operations community have grown. The SEAL is the ultimate naval special operator. All Hands Television dispatched Petty Officer Chris Robinson to Coronado, California, home of basic underwater demolition school and SEAL qualification training, to find out what it takes physically and mentally to build a SEAL. When a sailor arrives in California for SEAL training, he spends the first three weeks in INDOC, getting in shape and getting ready. But does anyone really get ready for that very first early day of BUDS? Get down in the mud and start crawling! It's 4.30 in the morning, and these sailors are standing in 60-degree air. Their bodies shake from the cold Pacific Ocean water they were just submerged in. It's only 30 minutes into their first day of Phase 1. They only have six months of basic underwater demolition school left. It isn't going to get easier for these sailors. For the next few hours, they are subjected to running, freezing temperatures, and some verbal motivation. Every BUDS candidate describes these activities the same way. Sucks. Everything about it sucks. Everything sucks. I mean, it just sucks, you know what I mean? <laughs> it just sucks, but you gotta do it, so. That doesn't deter BUD candidates. I love doing this stuff. I wouldn't rather, you know, I'd rather be here than anywhere else. The grueling physical training of BUDS serves three purposes. The first is to push these men to their limitations and take it further. The second is to develop a teamwork mentality. Finally, it's designed to weed out the sailors who aren't cut out for the job of special operator. First phase is, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's just a huge gut check. Everything is physical. They're, they want to see how you perform when you're completely stressed, when you're completely exhausted, when you're on the brink of injury, when you're, um, you know, when you're constantly being harassed and very little sleep, they just, that's what it is. It's just kind of a gut check. Who, who is going to stick with it even when it's really, is really getting hard. How hard is defined by the increasing line of helmets growing in the grinder. Each helmet symbolizes a sailor who didn't make it. Hard doesn't describe it well enough. If the cold ocean water doesn't get your attention, the instructors performing the barracks and personnel inspection will. Television, radio, internet, all this stuff. And you guys have plenty of opportunity to get the information you need before you get here. And it still looks like crap in here. I don't understand this. There's no excuse for this. It was a shock. Just everything was a shock. You know, it's uh, going into a life where you're just basically you know, giving everything you have just to make it from meal to meal, you know, and, and, and that's just the beginning. And all you can really ever do is, is just take it one day at a time and, you know, hope your body holds up and try to help out the guys next to you to take your mind off your pain. And it's, you know, once you get into the rhythm of it after a few weeks, you know, you, 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 that's all you really know. And it, you're able to tune it out a little bit, but it's still, it, it's a daily grind of misery. If there's a possibility of misery squared, then log PT could qualify. For more than 90 minutes, these sailors lift a 10 foot long, 205 pound log. The point is to instill in their head that their body can take it. But the underlying message is to make them work as a team. Success as a SEAL comes twofold. One, it takes a hard work ethic. A sailor can't back down from a challenge. In the morning, it could be a four mile run in boots on the sand. And in the afternoon, it could be lifting a 205 pound log for 90 minutes. Be ready to work. Secondly, and most importantly, to be a SEAL, there is no quit. It's easy day. Period. Not in the surf, not on a run, or on the obstacle course. 
towards the rope. You have to get speed and let the speed... These men, starting buds, learn a lot about themselves within the first few hours. From the greenest sailor to a commissioned officer, the choice is clear. Lead or get out of the way. Within the first, I'd say within the first three days of showing up to buds, I learned just as much as I did in four years at the academy with leadership. It's just, it's one of the few jobs you jump out, get commissioned and jump out into a direct leadership role. It all starts in the mind. It's mental toughness is what gets you through. So you could be 110 pounds and, you know, maybe not the best runner, the best swimmer, but you're a good team player. You physically hard, you can endure the elements. Those are the guys that make it through. Some, some people make it. Some people don't. We introduce them to absolute chaos, uh, and they struggle. But again, a light comes on, and they learn that if they can control their emotions, uh, even in the midst of utter chaos, they can continue to function at a very high level. Chaos is one thing, handling it is another. Well, in phase one, you're just convinced that they don't want you there and they hate you. And other, you know, they're all, the only thing that they want in life is to hurt you. What is wrong with you guys? Just keep a positive attitude, and if you think, you know, my legs really bother me, if you look around for one second, you'll see ten other guys' legs that are bothering them, and you, you know, if they can do it, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna quit. That mentality is what separates the sailors who move on in buds training through Hell Week and the rest of basic underwater demolition school. The never say die, never quit attitude. Every day was just a matter of, man, I can't quit. You know, I got family back home and that telephone call, I always thought about, I had to explain that I quit, you know, and I, I don't think I'd be able to live myself with that, so. For me, a big thing was just, I know I'd let a lot of people down if that ever came into my head and so. It was, and looking around, I knew a lot of the guys coming in too. I went to the Naval Academy and had a lot of good friends in the class, and I wasn't about to let them down, and they weren't about to let me down. Officer SEAL candidates train and go through buds side by side with enlisted. There is no easier version for officers. They get it just as difficult in INDOC. Phase one for these sailors culminates with Hell Week. But finishing buds doesn't make you a SEAL. It lets you go on to SQT, SEAL qualification training. It's another phase which tries to separate the future SEALs from the ringouts. I mean, they can make me get wet, they can make me stay cold, they can keep me miserable all day, every day for the next six to eight months. I can, you know, I can be, they can make me do everything, but the only thing they can't make me do is quit. And so I relish in the fact that the one thing that they can't make me do, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to quit. We'll have more from Coronado, California. Home of Buds and SQT after this.